Mm, okay. Hey guys, Daniel James here. And today is, I guess, officially episode one. I don't know. After a pilot episode, do you go to episode two or to episode one? Anyway, we're going to stay, we're going to say episode two because we'll count the pilot as episode one. Episode two of Today with Daniel James, which is our weekly talk radio show, radio talk show. I'm not sure how you're supposed to word it, where we have a question. Today's one uh, neatly set up here. I've, I've made a more succinct version up there. Is library music saturated? Uh, but the actual question we've got today is, do you agree? This is from uh, Gateway to Utopia on Twitter. And they ask, do you agree that music licensing, the music licensing industry is getting flooded with average or mediocre music due to the loop approach of many developers of contact libraries and the huge influx of new composers that now have easy access to these production tools? It was a little bit long worded to say every time we have a caller in. So I've put it up on the screen for me and for you guys so that you can reference it directly because there is more nuance to that question. But if you would question, question, but if you would like to just talk, call in and, you know, talk about the succinct one, we can do that too. Um, okay, so the first thing. So is library music saturated? So this is this is a question that is dominating our industry at the minute because a lot of people realized um, fairly recently that um, there wasn't much money in music anymore. You know, no one's buying uh, albums from the from the stores. Uh, piracy is prevalent. You know, and that's another topic I'd like to talk for. You know, talk about on another day. But a lot of people realized pretty quickly that. Library music is one of the last places where, where, where someone just writing music can make money. And by that, I mean, you're not writing to a deadline. You're not writing to a, um, you know, to a, a brief or, or maybe you would have a brief. Actually, I take that back, but you, you know, you don't have deadlines. So you could create a library album without anybody commissioning it first and you could sell it and make money. And I think, I think within the past, maybe five to 10 years, this has been, this has been something that a lot of composers have realized. So we have, you know, with the prevalence at mentioned in the question here, with the with the prevalence and the introduction of tools which make it even easier for new composers to get into the uh, library music scene, has it become saturated? Now, I personally think that we're probably hitting a saturation point. There's only so many Brahms we can hear in a week, you know, and how many different ways you can do it. But I am curious to hear what you guys think. So I'm actually going to, so Kev, I'm just going to um, move you out. I can't move you out. Yeah, I can. I'm just going to move you out, Kev, because we're going to move and start in the conversation. So I'm going to bring in Anil. Anil, can you hear me? Let's see if this works. So your microphone is muted, if you can hear me. Okay. Right. So he hasn't come on. So we're going to try it. We're going to move on. But don't worry. We'll try again in a second. So the Metalborn, can you hear me? Oh, God. We're struggling today. <laughs> Hopefully my, my mic is going through. Okay, let's try bringing Kevin. Hello, Kev. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I'm not just going crazy. Okay, so guys, get your microphones ready if you're in the, in the queue. So Kev, Kev, for those who don't know, Kev is a moderator to our stream and to our talk radio show. Kev, if you'd like wow, to say hello. Wow, I'm not even your friend? <laughs> you're, no, you're, you're a very dear and close friend. That, I thought yeah. that went without saying. So okay, Kev, okay. is library music saturated? What do you think? Um, I I would have gone. Uh, I think it is actually. To be fair, yeah. I think um, I think it's a good thing though. To be fair as well. Okay, right? that's an interesting perspective. How come? Um, because it shows that an industry is growing and there's more interest in it, right? Um, right. The fact that there are so many people making so many libraries is a good thing for everybody, right? Because uh, you could have a library that may be the same as another, but it's cheaper and gives another person an opportunity to use that library. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and, and don't forget, do not forget, Kev, that because now that there's more people doing it, there's more selection for game developers, for, uh, you know, movie <clears throat> makers of all levels, perhaps, you know, like, so whilst it may seem saturated, do you think that the the cream will rise to the the top, so to speak. Oh, uh, th this, that's something that happens in any industry, right? Um, right. Like uh, you have a lot of like you have a lot of products, and or you have a lot of customers, and you have so many products, like you know, off brands. Let, let's uh, let's use a small example that most people should understand. Um, how about cookies? You know, everyone has like their favorite fucking cookie brand, right? And cookies are definitely a saturated market. Is that is that yeah. a comparison? Okay. Yeah, that's a comparison, right? There's like over 50 cookie brands of like There's so many chip. cookies that you could choose, yeah. right? But everybody has and their brand of cookie. 
Exactly. And then you also um, lead the way for innovation, right? Uh, right? Like Famous Amos is a very cookie, very famous cookie brand in the United States. It's not very famous across the world, but a lot of people love Famous Amos. And then there's like Chips Ahoy, right? Like right. You, you have all these different brands that are like the pioneers of what a good cookie is. But then you have these niche cookies where it's like, oh, this is organic. Whereas like your niche is right. Um, hybrid music. Okay, well, well, Kev, what what is the epic music equivalent of a cookie? Epic music comparison, oatmeal cookie. cookies. An oatmeal cookie is epic music, is it? Yeah. Wow. Classic. Well, what do you guys do? You guys in the chat agree? Is oatmeal cookies epic? Don't worry, this isn't the usual conversation we're going to be having. <laughs> but no. So what I was what I was uh, uh, alluring to, I guess you could say, is that you know the lower level. Uh, not lower level, but let's say that, um, you know, as part of the question, someone was bemoaning, I think, perhaps somewhat the loop culture, you know. So there's a lot of libraries now where you get pre-baked loops, you know, bits of the music are already done for you. And it makes it very easy for someone on the lower level. Now, do you think that those people um, are are just as valid in the, you know, the library music industry as someone who, say, creates everything from scratch? There, there is a, I, I, I had an example in my head, but I keep forgetting it, but there is a difference. Yes. So right. someone who makes everything from scratch will have a better understanding of what they're doing and the quality overall in the end will be better. You, you'll hear certain subtleties, whereas someone who uses a loop will have a sound that you've already heard. Right. And and that's, so, and that's what I was saying about the cream, you know, like, so th I, I think it's more likely that people who are creating more bespoke sounds who are creating more, which for me is, you know, actually detrimental to my business because I'm one of the people that makes these loop libraries. But yeah. I think the people who gen in general make their own thing, who make their own sound, even if it's taking presets and instead of using the presets, turning it into, you know, your own thing. I think that those people are more likely to get those bigger placements. And that like interesting, like, like you mentioned, cause I hadn't thought of it this way because the library music scene is so saturated. There is something for everyone of every level, you know, because I think some of these loop library composers who are getting placements are probably on the lower placements, but at the same time, those lower developers or filmmakers couldn't afford, you know, the higher cost of these ones that have risen to the top. So it, I think the saturation, as you mentioned, and I like the way you've looked at it is it's kind of a good thing because it's it's just more for everybody it's more opportunity for everybody perhaps it, it definitely is and it shows you when people are being innovative and very very creative right because right. you'll hear a new sound and you'll you'll know it right away it's like this is this is good right you'll right. know it whereas opposed to like well we can hire this composer for like 50 bucks <laughs> it's it's gonna be your basic whatever yeah it's okay, right? And it gives right. that person an opportunity to have a job and to work on what they want to work on. Awesome. Well, Kev, thank you for calling in and thank you for bailing me out and checking mics will work in there, <laughs> as you always tend to do. Is there anything you'd like to say to the, to the chat room before we move on? No, I'll, I'll be, I'm, I'm going to take a shower, but I'll, I'll be back. If you have like technical <laughs> problems, I'll be around. So let me know. All right, Kev, thank you so much for calling in. So chat room, please say thank you to Kev for calling in again, Kev, a good friend of the stream, good friend of me personally. Um, so yeah, library music, Kev had an interesting perspective on that one. Kev's perspective was that it's a good thing that the library music, so he agreed with the premise that it is saturated, but he didn't bemoan that fact. He, he, you know, he thinks that's a positive thing. What do you guys think? Remember, if you'd like to speak in the chat room down here and you would like me to read it out. So it's, it's, you know, put forward to me as something to respond to. Please start your comment with at hybrid two. That way it will uh, it will glow on my chat room and I'll be able to see. But let's try another caller. So let's try the Metalborn again. The Metalborn, can you hear me? Hello, Daniel. Yes, I can. Fantastic. Hank, bear with me one second. I just need to turn your volume up. Don't don't touch anything. I can do it. You may want to turn off the stream or mute it in the background because I can hear myself a little bit. I'm on my phone. I hope, I hope that's okay. That is absolutely is it fine. I turned it down? No, that's absolutely fine. So the Metalborn, is yes. library music saturated? I'm going to go with a yes right now. We are I getting a lot of kind of the same libraries, you know, like you said. Um, there's so many brands you can go through in a day. And honestly, <laughs> so many I have a lot of libraries, and I have not gone into as much of depth as I probably could have if, say, I had uh, – 
you know, one Bram library. If I only had one Bram library, I probably know everything in there, but I have multiple. Right. So it's hard to go through every single one of them in, you know, a space of 24 hours. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think about, what do you think about, um, the, do you, well, firstly, do, do you agree, uh, agree with the premise that's put forward here that the, uh, that the industry is flooded with average and mediocre music? Or do you think it's all generally good quality? I mean, do you think that it's like we're having too many average people? Do you think that's what's causing this saturation point, this genericness? I think there are some that definitely stand out more than others. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, a pre-recorded loop is, you know, fine to go with. Uh, but obviously having that customization there can make it truly your own, you know, with, uh, what right. the one library you have where you can make your own loops, you know, that's pretty neat. Right. Um, right. but if you need something quick, you know, Oh, I like this sound, or maybe I'll take this sound. That's a preset and I will make my own sound that sounds similar with a little bit of flair here and there. Right. And then um, if you I would to... probably say Go ahead. that, uh, I don't, there are bad, I, I would say there are bad libraries out there. Right. Um, but for the majority of the big names, you know, Audio Imperia, who else does, you know, Keep right. Forest, you know, they have, they have good libraries. I think they have. I, th I think you may be talking library. more about the sample library industry. We're talking more about the library music. So, you know, like music that's, uh, that you make an album of epic music and then someone places mm -hmm. that in a trailer. Do you think that that's saturated? Hmm. Let me think. Because I felt like you were going, you you were talking about sample libraries, am, which is my mistake. I because I just realized I, I apologize. No, no, no. That's that that's absolutely fine. You made some valid points on that subject, but I wanted to try and keep it keep it on today's mm -hmm. topic, or we'll end up going all over the place. Right. Um. You know, I'll be two hundred percent honest with you. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I know enough to give you an accurate answer on that question. That's fine. That's fine. Well, look at it this way. Do you think there's too much epic music these days? Um, too many brands, man, love... too many, too many trailers too many that sound the same. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm, I'm, I love it. So I'm going to say, uh, but I want good brands. You know, I want, I want, want all good the brands. good epic music. Right, right. Right. There are well, bad you, ones out there. Do you think the loop approach is, is causing the saturation? Because of like one of the biggest, you know, just to fill you in, cause you said you weren't aware of like this too much. One of the big, um, one of the big complaints we're hearing from other composers these days or from trailer houses is that a lot of the music is all starting to sound the same. It's becoming very generic, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that's the thing when there's, when there's a little niche. So, you know, at one point it was epic choirs and now we had like the little, you know, this kind of shit with the high piano just playing in the trailer and now we've got these weird cup you know like everybody wants to rule the <laughs> boom, kung, kung, kung. you know like we're getting a lot of those these days and that's what what tends to happen is something's popular and then that little niche would flood and i, th I think that's what our uh, uh, what our question today is pointing okay. at is the loop approach. I think a lot of that is coming from the loop approach. So what happens is someone makes something yes. popular. Some arsehole like me makes a sample library of it, of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then lots of other people, like lots of other composers who like that style will then, right. you know, because it, it's interesting because the, the thought work has already been put in beforehand by the person who did it first. When someone you know, like makes a loop library or, you know, a sample library based on it. A lot of the thought work is done. So then it's just practical making that type of thing. So I don't know if that's yeah. fair, but anyway, that's, that's beside the point. <laughs> Sorry, right. I'm going off. Did, it, but do you think the loop approach like is that? adding to that problem? Yeah. Uh, since you worded it like that, I will say that, yes, it is very saturated right now because yeah. you, you, you did the, um, what was that? The battlefield five, like, right. Um, or like that that trailer, for example, you know that had big brams in it. Um, I, I, yeah, I love a big bram. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never apologize uh, for my brams. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. No, brams are cool. Um, I then it, since you put it that way, I will say yes, it is saturated. And, um, and what what do you think the solution to it is? How do we get out of this saturation point? We're gonna move the drones instead. No. We're gonna move to drones instead. You know what? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna make that Metalborn. Thank you so much for calling. I'm going to leave, make that as your final statement on the okay. question. We're gonna move to drones instead. I like it. Is there anything you would like to say to the chat room before we move on, sir? Uh, needs more brands and Calvo. 
<laughs> needs more Brams and Kappa. Well, everybody in the chat, please say thank you to the Metalborn. <laughs> Fantastic. We're moving to a drone type. So yeah, for any confusion in the chat room there, uh, we're talking about library music. So that's different from sample libraries. Library music is things like, uh, it's albums that people put together that trailer houses or TV shows, uh, they find these albums and then they pick a song and they put the song in their production. That's what library music is. And the easiest way, when whenever a question like this comes up, the easiest way to think about it is like epic music. Is trailer music too saturated? There are too many composers attempting to do that. So let's pull in someone. Let's try Bailey Sounds. Bailey Sounds, can you hear me? Oh. So far, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything from Bailey Sounds. I'll give you a few seconds to call in. Okay, not yet. So we're moving Bailey Sounds out. Remember, if you want to join the Discord, link in the chat room right now to call in. All you have to do is move to the queue for questions and make sure you have a microphone plugged in and then you will unmute it when I drag you in. Okay, so let's try Zenteca. Zenteca, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Zenteca, welcome back to the chat, correct? You've, you've called in before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. No, I haven't. I, I tried going into the music theory one, but... Ah, yeah, I remember seeing yeah. your name. and I apologize yeah, yeah. for not getting to it, but hey, I got you this time. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you fantastic today? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks. Okay, so Zenteca, is library music saturated? Saturated? Yes, definitely. Um, and is, is that I a problem? Like... <laughs> problem? No, I don't think it's a problem. Having more of a thing is, is never a bad thing, I think. Mm -hmm. But there's a, it's like I said, it uh, leads to a certain problem where people will uh, go back to those solutions because it's the fastest way. Right. Like it doesn't just strictly go back to stuff like not being creative. It comes back to what does the director want? What does right. the management so want? So do you think that the saturation point is in part the fault of the trailer library houses who like something specific, but they don't want to use the same thing. They want the same thing, but different. So, you know, that leads to people like me delivering that, you know, to the composers so that they have more of the same thing that's different. So do you think that the, the trailer houses, the directors, they're actually contributing to the saturation of the market? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's I did like, voice that uh, as a yes or no question, didn't I? <laughs> I need to learn yeah, to voice no, but, Go ahead. No, it's fine. But, but yeah, um, what I'm thinking is that, it, um, sorry, um, it stopped when the, oh, fuck. It's okay. I forget what I'm talking about all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'll, sorry. No, that, no it's, uh, it's like, yeah, I, I, I got it. When, like I said earlier, you have a certain trend that will mm -hmm. always uh, be repeated and people will latch on to that trend. Yes. And and the bigger like uh, studios, producers, whatever, they will latch on to that and they will try to milk it as much as possible. Right. So we're, I think we're in that kind of point right now. But yeah. Maybe we'll go out of it later. Yeah. Well, well, one thing, well, yeah. One thing I've always found is that... Look, um, Trailer music, well, not trailer music, library music in general tends to be very kind of uh, genre. Like I think of it like, do you remember new metal in the early 2000s? How quickly that kind of became a thing and then it died out once it had served its purpose. Like yeah. music has become very disposable. I feel like library music, like you mentioned, there's a style that people like and then everybody does it until, yeah, okay, we get it. And then no one ever does it ever again. Do you, do you think that that's a problem yeah. we're going to face nowadays? Yes, I th I do think so because it's there's always new trends and people will right. latch onto those no matter what. It's not a it's not a case of if it's a case of when. So so e so what you're saying is even though it is saturated, the mu the industry will always move to something new. So it doesn't really matter if it's saturated. The only thing that's saturated is stuff we've already done. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes total sense. Actually, I like the way you think about that. So that way. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, the question to you is almost irrelevant whether or not it's saturated. If it's saturated now, you'll just make something brand new. And then it's, it, you know, you're the first person on the block. So that's actually good. That's good um, advice, I'd say. Like, even, even if I'm not sure you were intending it to be so, but, you know, that no, not really, but 
I'll, but I'll but it. It, it stands firm. It stands firm. If you think that library music is saturated, create something new. I mean, not that yeah. that's an easy thing to do. But <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Yeah, just go make it. It's fine. Oh, why, why didn't I think of that in the first place? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Fuck, um, I would be... I would... Oh, go no, ahead. No, sorry. It's okay. You can no, cut yeah, me off fine. whenever you like. It's fine. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go, go on. So, so go, going back to the, the way the question was phrased for us today by outsider, do you think that the loop approach is actually contributing to the, I'd say because of the way you're talking about it, just the speed at which a certain genre saturates? Do you think that we're, like, we're a contributor to that, the people who make loops? The loop industry, probably. Yeah. I'm not and like I'm not gonna say anything for certain, but it definitely played a part in it for sure. Yeah. Is it too easy now? Is it too easy to be a library composer? I mean, we were talking yesterday about how essential, not yesterday, last week about how essential uh, music theory was. You know, because the industry is, yeah. you know, much more user friendly. Uh, do you think perhaps we've gone too far and it's it's too easy now to make quality music that you know industries that uh, you know people relied on for their income are now too saturated to be viable as a career to some certain degree i i do yeah yeah like whenever i go to a um i, I try to find music on youtube or something mm -hmm. like that i'll go and find like uh some string library whatever and some there'll always be like these epic uh, big collections of the like the big boomy brands, like you said. Yeah. And I do think it becomes a bit generic because people will have the same approaches. They're like, they'll hear, they'll, uh, hear this sound specifically and like, yep. I want that sound. And now everyone's doing the same thing. So it yep. keep, keep, it's a loop of its own, basically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Anyway, so thank you so much, Zenteka, for calling in. I'm glad I got to you this time. Um, <laughs> was there anything yeah, you'd like no. to say to the chat room before you go, sir? Um, no, no, not really. Um, screw you guys. Zentech yeah, screw, you, screw guys. you chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Everybody in the chat room, please say a big thank you to Zentech for calling in. So yeah, that was uh, another interesting point. The industry itself is somewhat of a loop. You know, we create something new that becomes saturated. So then we're forced to move into other, but on the flip side, that's where we're going to go with this. Now on the flip side, do you think that that need to recreate is actually beneficial to us as composers? If the live, if the industry is saturated, that drives us to create, perhaps that's something we can discuss. Let's bring in Don Baz. Don Baz, can you hear me? Your microphone is muted, sir. Don Baz, give you a few more seconds. Okay. No, no, he's gone. Okay, he, he'd had enough of that. Right, let's have a, let's bring in, let's bring in Juicy Yuji. Juicy Yuji, can you hear me? Now, remember if you, oh. oh yes, okay. I can. Hey, Hello. Juicy Yuji, welcome to the stream, sir. How are you today? Uh, not too bad. Uh, not waking too up. <laughs> just waking up it's the best way best time to call into a talk radio show when you're waking up there's all sorts of things you could say anyway juicy ug yes. is is the library music industry saturated what do you think Ooh, um right i mean i think personally um mm -hmm. as far as as far as that goes i think that having a larger toolbox is not a bad thing. Right. I think that it's good to have all those different options out there. Now, um, in my personal opinion, I do think that the market is becoming more expansive. And right. as a result, I think it's actually disadvantageous to okay. charge so much for, um, individual libraries because you get a lot of kind of niche libraries in between that I find. Mm -hmm. And I think that every one of these libraries and every one of the sounds have their uses, like even the loops and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I think that they should be made more to be more accessible, if that makes sense. Right. So, so say, say that to me again. So you think that loop, I, I assume you're talking about sample libraries. We are talking about library music today, but 
the, the sample oh. library loop part is part of this discussion. So you think that yeah. perhaps we're making loops too available. Is that what you're saying? Or not available enough? Not available enough is what I, I oh. my guess. Yes. But do, you, do, you not, do you not fear that having, uh, like, let's say that all, tomorrow I made all of Hybrid 2's loops for free. Do you not think that then library music itself would become even more saturated than it already is because it's so accessible? Um, mm, yeah, actually, <laughs> well, that would make sense. Um, but, I mean, yeah, go ahead. But, but on the flip side, on the flip side, like our last caller mentioned, if something becomes too saturated, could it not also be considered a positive because then it forces the creative among us to do what we're, yeah, we're basically, we're forced to do what we're born to do. And that is create something brand new. So do you not think that saturation perhaps could be a positive thing? No, I, I, yeah, no, I think that it can be because, you know, I mean, I'm from the school of thought that, you know, yeah, you get all this, this variety here, but honestly, I think that loops and whatnot should not be treated as, oh, hey, let's just use this, which is obvious, but, you know, I think that they should be used as building blocks right because if you if you take a loop like we have a, a huge issue in the industry that everybody constantly talks about is inspiration like these can be used for inspiration if you take those sounds the uh, to me the idea is not to use them directly but use right. them as a building block so there, there was Go a time i don't know if you remember this back uh in the stylus rmx days there used to be that one loop that was like dun 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 <laughs> dun, dun and it was in everything now i agree with you mm -hmm. on that point like back in those days when there was maybe one or two and that that's literally like one or two popular loop libraries, you know, that was like Stylus RMX. I think that then we were having a saturation of, of sound. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't enough variety, even in the tone and the texture of the music. Although like now to a degree, I actually think I see where you're coming from is that the more accessible and the more options people have, the less likely they are to use the exact same thing. Is it, is that what you were saying? Um, yeah. 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 That's yeah. That to, so, to yeah. me. So yeah, if, if like there's only a few libraries that are really accessible, that's a smaller sample pool for people to draw from. Whereas if they had hundreds and hundreds of loop libraries, they're more likely to all choose different loops for their songs, meaning that all the music would sound different. I actually, that's a very, again, lots of interesting approaches today that I'd not thought of. Maybe I haven't put enough thought into this juicy as I thought I had. <laughs> but no. <laughs> well, I mean, there's always something to learn. There's always something. Well, thank you so much. We do actually have quite a backlog of callers. So thank you so much, Juicy UG, for calling in. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the chat room before we move on, sir? Um, no, no, I'm all right. <laughs> no, no, that's twice yeah. in a row, chat. So everybody in the chat, please say thank a big thank you to Juicy UG for calling in. Um, so let's take a look at who we've got now. So we've had a few different... Uh, we've had a few different opinions. Um, the last one being that perhaps if we were to make sample libraries more accessible, it gives people more options to choose from, which is actually a very interesting thing that I'm going to write down. More options, more variation, I guess it would be. More options, more variation. Anyway, so what do you guys think? Again, we are talking about library music today. So is there too much epic music in the world? Is saturation a bad thing? Perhaps saturation causes us to be more creative. So let's bring in, uh, let's see what we got here. Let's bring in, I'm not seeing people with microphones, but let's bring in this guy, Richard yeah, Batchelor. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear myself. Richard Batchelor, can you oh, hear me? Oh God. Yes, I can hear you. M mute, mute the stream, Richard. Oh God. Ah, what do I do? Mute the stream, Richard. Mute the stream, Richard. Mute the stream, ah, there we go. Oh Jesus. Oh, we got it. <laughs> ah, no, wait, what, what am I doing? Ah, Jesus. Oh, we got it. <laughs> ah, no, wait, what okay. Ah! okay we, right, we're just going to move Richard Bachelor out of the stream for a second while he sorts out his stream. So, Richard, before I bring you back in, sir, please mute the stream and make it so that you can only hear me. Perhaps headphones might work in this situation. Um, but <laughs> let's give that one more try. Um, mute, mute the stream. Okay. Richard, can you hear me? 
Richard Batchelor, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, I can slightly hear myself, but it's okay. I'm just going to talk yes. really quiet. Oh, God, this is this is weird. Okay, library music, is it saturated? Go for it. Okay, library music, is it saturated? Go for it. Yes. Short answer, absolutely yes. Oh, God. Richard, like, I, thank you so much for the answer, but that we can't deal with the echo right Richard. now. So I apologize. I had to move Richard out, but everybody <laughs> say thank you to Richard Batchelor for adding some much needed comedic uh, timing there by having the loop of the gods come in. Um, if you if you are listening to both the stream and the call, uh, please make uh, sure to either wear headphones or <laughs> not have uh you know, or, you know, put headphones on would be the best thing on, you know, make it so that I can't hear uh, everything coming back through. Sorry about that, Richard. We'll have to try you again in the next one. So let's pull in uh, put cloud. In cloud. Yeah, you got Wait, cl oh, God. cloud jumper. Can you hear me? Totally. Yes. Cloud. Welcome to the stream, sir. How are you today? Oh, pretty good. How are you, Daniel? I am fantastic always. So <laughs> cloud jumper, library music. <laughs> Library music, epic music, trailer music, call it what you will. Is it a saturated market? Um, yeah, you know what? I think it is a little bit saturated at the moment. Mm. And do you think that that's because of the prevalence of loop libraries? As, as put forward in our question, the way it was worded was, do you think it's being flooded with average and mediocre music due to the loop approach? And, and for what they're saying there, the loop approach is the fact that developers like me who you know are experienced at a certain type of sound per se we make a preset sound for someone and then they just use that sound without knowing pretty much how it's put together which means that the music is just all pretty much going to sound like the people who make the loops so do you think that that's the reason it's saturated or do you think it's for other reasons well you know actually i think there there might be like a little bit of truth to that mm. but i think that mainly it's for a different reason um and i think it's a little bit more like how the market of media in general developed because it really blew up a lot. And so that means, you know, there's shorter production cycles, a lot more demand. And then obviously people will try to somehow, you know, deliver on those demands. And then obviously tools like loop libraries are a really easy way to kind of, you know, supply those people who try to deliver to those demands. So like in a way, what I'm trying to say is there seems to be a, chain of causality that you can't just isolate and say like oh well we're having like much epic music right now or it's the fault of the loop libraries because it's all connected to what's happening in the rest of the media composing and media environment right so so you think somewhat it's, it's actually the fault of the uh directors themselves that's causing this saturation perhaps well, I wouldn't even go like and blame it on the directors because like even the directors are just sort of like in the in the end everyone just kind of tries to do their job and you know make a living and whatnot. Yeah. And therefore, if we suddenly have these like large quantities of movies, for example, coming out and they all need trailers, and then we have a trend of a movie not having one but like ten or five trailers. Right. Um, then and then we have different trailers in all the countries and so on. Then this this large quantity needs to be filled. So you know, like I don't think that like I like epic music and I don't think it's like mediocre or anything. But what I do think is that just from the standpoint of of writing it, um, it certainly or it can be a little faster right. than, than than writing like a sort of long form track or whatever. But and... do, you not, do you not think that the selections perhaps of, because at the end of the day, uh, this is a supply and demand industry. So do you not think yeah. that if perhaps the directors or the trailer houses had more imagination for the music, it would force us composers to create new things every time? Do you like, so I guess the better way to word that is, do you think they, they play it too safe? Yeah, well, you you know, I think there is now and then a few who try to kind of uh, get a bit more creative. Yeah. But but really, like, I think a lot of the people who are making those decisions are just viewing it as a business. And as long as it works, right? I mean, I watch an epic trailer, I get hyped, and, and I'm I go, I see the movie, I provide as the as the end user um, the feedback that this 
method works. Right. So, but it, it, it is like, somewhat. It is somewhat like uh, like the uh, the strong bacteria. I used this example with my wife the other day. She didn't quite get it, but I'm going to try it here. It's it's like the the like bacteria. How if there's only a certain amount of food supply, it becomes so successful, it grows too quick, it eats all the food and then dies out. It's somewhat like that, isn't it? It's so as I mentioned earlier, there'll be that one trailer house that has that vision. You know, like they they don't want to use the Brams, they want to use that singer. Yeah. You know, that's that they yeah, want to do exactly. that cover song. And I, and then I what happens is everybody does the cover song. What you're saying there, because yeah. this like bacteria analogy, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, like looking at this whole thing as an ecosystem. And I think that right. makes sense. But I think it's eventually, like like a few people said already, it's eventually probably going to balance back because right. if you have an ecosystem that's over uh, focused on just one resource, um, eventually it sort of burns out. Right. And then that opens the way for the next big thing that, you know, like I mentioned, and that, that goes into the next part of the question with the loop. Uh, wait, how did they phrase it? The loop approach, you know, so someone creates something new, but the market becomes saturated. One person creates something new. Everybody wants that. So all the developers create stuff for that. And then all the amateur and mediocre, I believe it's worded composers take that uh, that sample and then imitate. Do you think that that is a, a a cheating thing? Do you think that's a bad thing, or do you think that's just the way of life? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Sorry, I made that. I made that sound way melodramatic. I didn't mean it to. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's just the way of life, but you know, I also don't think that it's a that it's a necessarily bad thing because that's something that like historically has happened all the time in like every every kind of industry where we have trends we have those sort of things a new trend comes up and then suddenly right. there's this cascading effect of things getting easier and easier and easier by other people instead of providing the thing that's in trend providing a tool to make it easier to provide that thing that's the trend so yeah. you know i think that's that's something we probably will have to deal with until the end of time or whatever. Yeah, and it leads to more variation, I think. Like, so I was playing devil's advocate somewhat there. You know, someone, if someone creates something, obviously you don't want to rip them off. But as the same time as a creative, if someone comes off, comes up with an idea that I'd never thought of, I'm not going, I, you know, there's a very good chance that I and every other composer won't do what they did exactly the same way that they did. So, I, you know, I was playing devil's advocate somewhat because I, I think that it's actually a beneficial thing. Someone creates something new. I don't think it's bad if other people imitate because I think what they're doing is, is exploring the idea to its completion. You know what I mean? I feel like saturation point is when we say, okay, lads, we've done it. We figured this one. <laughs> we can move on <laughs> from Browns yeah, now. Yeah, totally. I think we've explored and, I mean it. Diversity is kind of the key to any ecological system that's successful, right? And so, yeah. like, I mean, I think it was you at some point in a stream that said creativity is the ability to hide your influence. Yep. So if that applies, clever, right, then as long as we're in this boat of epic music, then maybe it's not whether or not the market is saturated. Maybe it's more like whether or not we as composers can come up with stuff that makes uh, epic music interesting. Like, you know, what? like I could take inspiration from like, you know, any other composer, but then I need to get creative and find a way right. to make music, like epic music different again. I agree. I, I think that's more the, the you know, like what, what we as composers should ask ourselves. Like, how can we do that? And I think that's probably what the question was, uh, that the tweet was pointing at, is that the loop approach is actually leading to a kind of, uh, it, it's leading to more people being lazy, I guess, is what the, the way it's worded. I feel that's what they're trying to say. Do you feel that that's the case? So the, the mediocre and the average who are just in it, let's say for the money, or, you know, you know what I mean? They're not in it for the craft. They're not in it for the creativity. You know, so they're the ones, this is what they're, the, this person's saying. I'm not sure I agree with this, but they buy the loop libraries and they buy the things, you know, just in order to get involved. Do you, do you think that that's, that's a real thing? Or do you think people genuinely care about the music they're writing? Because the way this is worded is that uh, it's generic because it's easy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's always like, it always sounds 
super dramatic when you make like these broad sweeping generalizations, I right? I know they, like, usually, they usually elicit the, uh, the best responses you see. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that there, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there is people out there who just try to make a quick buck, you know, like right. they, they generally exist most of the time. And I'm sure there is also people out there who have, while they are interested in, in making money off their work, obviously, have a more, let's say, creative and artistic approach who have that, like what you said, that creative value of being like, well, I care about what I write and I want to make something good yeah. at the same time and, I'm trying and to I, I do think demand. I do think that like anything, it's a self-organizing hierarchy that the best people will go to the top and the lazy ones will remain in that, you know, uh, what is it? The generic <laughs> lower level. You know what I mean? I feel like to a degree yeah. it self-sorts itself. To to totally. And I mean, like our industry is kind of uh, an example of that. You know, yeah. it's like we, we don't see anybody on any posters or in any credits that hasn't in some way or form, and I'm not saying there's just one way, there's many ways, but I has somehow put their time and their effort in. Yeah. Well, that, that was, and, a, oh, go, go ahead, go on. You can have and, one more and thing. Like, you know, I mean, like all the, like all your products and like what you've been doing on the stream so far, I think is a great example of like, yeah, sure. You could take loose and that it depends on what you do with that. Right. right. Like, I mean, if you use a contact library or, uh, like bought loops, or if you record with an orchestra, I mean, in the end, it depends on whether the outcome that your product is, is yeah. creative and original. Well, in yeah, some exactly. Way. I, I agree with you. It's like, for example, if I use a drum and bass drum loop in a drum and bass song, it's nothing special. If I find out a decent way to use a drum and bass loop against a classical orchestra, I've got something new there. You know what I mean? Context does matter, regardless of how much you use the loop, how much you do to it, where you put it is also in, as important yeah absolutely and then it, the really interesting thing is can you somehow do this in a way that you provide enough context for your audience to be on board with you yeah absolutely well cloud jumper thank you so much for calling in today is there anything you'd like to say to the chat room before you leave um no not really i mean i just really like this format and thanks so much for doing this you are more than welcome so thank you every like everybody please say a big thank you to cloud jumper in the chat the the e of jumper is a number three if you want to at him to let him know thank you so we've had another few things there another few uh topics of discussion you know is is um you know is is imitation leading to more variation i should probably write that down imitation leading to more variation uh is that something that's perhaps happening if you'd like to have your say and call in don't forget discord link in the chat room uh make sure you have a microphone if you've got the stream on and you're listening to you know uh listening to me through speakers try and put headphones on before calling in or we end up with a richard bachelor situation let's give him another try let's see if it works uh richard bachelor are you there sir I am, yes. You fixed it, Richard. I apologize. I had to throw you out last time. I heard like four different versions of me screaming, and I think that was a bit too much for the chat. So yes. <laughs> anyway, how are you today, sir? I am doing really, really well. How are you doing? It's it's good to hear another Brit. It's it's uh, it's not, you know, a common thing where I live anymore. Anyway, anyway, Richard, is library music saturated? Library trailer, epic music, whatever you want to call it. Is it saturated these days? And is it a problem? Um, I would say, yes, it definitely is saturated, Right. but, um, here's the thing. If people like composers like, uh, Hans Zimmer mm -hmm. and I mean, everyone on here, uh, well, they'll, they'll have like a basic, at least a basic kind of, um, music theory knowledge right. and you can tell when a song is in something like D. Right. Okay. And I think what a lot of this kind of saturation has led to is a, you can tell when a lot of this, a lot of these tracks are in that particular key. Right. Leaving a lot of big gaps in between your sentences there, Richard. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to the, um, the, the uh, delay here. No, it's okay. You you get your thought out, and if I just start interrupting, you know, <laughs> then then you could stop. Just get your thought out, 
and don't wait for me. I will definitely interrupt you. <laughs> no problem. There, 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 there is a general thought process amongst all of the madness. And I think it, you do make some really good po uh, points here um, about how trailer music kind of evolves throughout the years. You made some points about the... Um, about the, 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 the slow cover songs, how they all kind of stop to to to, to um to to, 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 to half time. Richard, out of interest, out of interest. So I, I can hear that you're kind of struggling to get this out. Are you are you hearing a feedback loop of yourself <laughs> through the like? Are you hearing yourself talk through the microphone and back through your speakers? Yes, yes, I am. Because <laughs> yeah. I can tell. Do you remember the uh, the word jammers? The word jammers they put on the phone where you would put headphones in and it would do like a delayed version of your voice. So you end up talking. It, it sounds like you're struggling with that somewhat. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question because this is going to be difficult for us to have a conversation this way, but it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to allow you to get your thought out and a few things I'd like you to talk about. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your headphones off. You're not going to hear anything and you're just going to make the point. OK, <laughs> OK, so first, is it saturated, which you, you agreed it was? So is that a bad thing? And do you think it leads us to be more creative? Have your say and then we're going to move on. I apologize, but I need to keep it flowing. So go ahead. Um, no, <laughs> no. Uh, no, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all uh, because music generally evolves and it's much like chart music, really. At the moment, you've got like trap music at the moment, which is huge. Um, you've got the big artists like Drake who will just like release things like double albums and it will just flood the Billboard charts, charts completely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Richard, thank so, you so much for calling in. I, I apologize right. that we're having so much, <laughs> so much difficulty in the call. Oh, and it's sorry. I, I moved you out way before you were supposed to there, Richard. I, I didn't mean to move you out that quick. Is there anything you'd like to say to the chat no room worries. before we move on? I apologize. We'll figure this out for the next time. But anything you'd like to say? Uh, um, just sorry. Sorry. And Sorry, and I'm just uh, glad to be part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize so much. But everybody, please say thank you to Richard in the uh, in the chat room. So if you were unaware of what was happening there, Richard was hearing a feedback loop of himself. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried to talk while you're hearing yourself talk delayed. It ends up making you stop. Uh, but, you know, so we needed to move on. But, you, you know, you're more than welcome to call in again <laughs> another time, Richard. OK, so we've had a few. Oh, stay, the Stig, can you hear me? I sure can. Well, welcome to the stream, sir. I apologize. Hello, hello. To, I apologize to Richard. <laughs> like, just oh, yeah. Before we move it's okay. on. We all did in the in the waiting room. We all said, sorry, Richard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, I know how tricky that can be. But the Stig, uh, library music, right. trailer music, epic music. Is it a saturated market? Is it a problem? Uh, so one thing I like about problems is they require modern solutions. Modern problems, know? modern solutions. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, however, like uh, I was actually, I do music, but my background is actually in video. And okay. a lot of times uh, editors, they'll, they'll, they'll search. Well, so they're done editing something and they usually have a temp track they're not allowed to use. And they go in and what sounds just music. like this. <laughs> yeah. And stock music is generally a pain to get through because you're looking for a certain mood and you're almost never going to get that certain mood. Right. Uh, but what a lot of people I know end up doing is going to like weird niche, like free creative commons releases right. of other bands Interesting. and just buying that because you're generally going to get a more unique sound. I, I've seen clients get like, Oh, I've heard that Kevin McLeod song everywhere. Can we switch that out? Kind of right. thing. Um, but yeah, when it comes to, I guess, Epic trailer music, I guess it's just like, I guess it's a trend and you know, yeah. like each trend has like its weird set of cliches. Like the Brahms are still kind of there and the little piano thing. I refuse to let them you, die. You know, yeah. I mean, they're nice. They're cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just, I guess it's just kind of a cliche that sticks around for a bit and it's probably going right. to stick around for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, so from, from the video editor's perspective, do you, do you agree with what my previous comment to some degree that perhaps uh, the people who are utilizing the music are somewhat to blame for the saturation because, you know, they they know like they will edit to this one song that they like, but they can't get the license for that. So they're just hoping that there's lots of content exactly like this <laughs> that they can yeah. choose between. So do you think they're somewhat responsible for the saturation? 
Oh yeah, and I think so. A lot of editors I know will edit things to like their personal collection, but they won't show the music they use to the director or anything because right. they don't want to bias them and make it harder for whatever composer they hire. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, they do edit with that kind of music in mind, and if they don't end up getting a composer, uh, then you know they'll they'll probably pull from a library something very similar. So that's that's actually speaking of feedback loops. There's one right there. Right. Um, and. Yeah, it's kind of it's it's an inter it's an interesting dichotomy because I think at one hand we want to use something we know the client's gonna love, which is you know oh yeah I heard that in a big trailer music let's use that you know yeah and that's generally how a lot of clients think. But on the other hand, I think if you use something really unexpected and interesting, clients like that just as much. Right. And we don't get that a lot. It, like going through I don't know what's Audio Jungle. Like we all have <laughs> subscriptions to Audio right. Jungle and. You know, it's not just trailer music that's oversaturated. There's dubstep, synthwave, all those things. Are everything. Just having, everything yeah, just is really... saturated. But do oh, you yeah, not think, just, do you not, again, yeah. uh, like we were chatting with one of our previous calls, do you not think that that is, is a positive for, for the artistry of music because it forces us to be more creative in order to stand out? Oh, yeah. It's, actually, I actually think it's cool because I think the more people get sick of the status quo, the more interesting stuff we Hello. Oh, the stick. Are you are you still there? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, so um, anyway, uh, what was this? Oh yeah. So I think the more people get uh, kind of sick of like the cliches or I guess the status quo, the more interesting stuff we can get. Right. Because but, you're gonna yeah you're gonna yeah it's gonna get oversaturated. You're gonna the more normy quote unquote uh, things get, uh, the more people come in saying like I'm gonna I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. Yeah, and th and that's usually what happens. Like like we've been saying, you get that one person that that does something creative, like the you know the creative cover singing song, and then everybody imitates it. And and do you think that that's a problem, or do you think that that leads like uh, that imitation is actually a positive way to explore the idea more thoroughly? Um, I think a lot of experience, like composers who kind of have a name for themselves, can get away with doing that pretty easily. I think if you're new, it might help to have a slightly interesting flair. Otherwise, you're going to be a nobody who sounds like everyone else. I think people would almost right. always go for a somebody who sounds like everybody else. Right. So yeah. so like like our like our tweet today said that that's that leans somewhat in into the loop approach. So do you think mm -hmm. that um the people who are composing by the loop approach and I assume this means like the, the lowest minimal amount of effort possible in <laughs> in order to... Do, do you think that's a problem for the people who take it seriously? Do you think that the the loop, you know, loop-only lazy composer, do you think that they're ever going to be able to compete with the 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 top, you know, the, the, the best in the business? Or do you think that the, the true creators will always have uh, that little something extra? Uh, so I guess with loops, we're under the assumption that it's not just loops that they've created and reused, right. but loops that they buy in a pack. Yeah. Okay. Or like comes with their DAW or whatever. Does yeah, this kind of it, feed into the, I mean, yeah, it, the it can mean both library? things. It, it can be like presets. It can be, you know, multis that have been mm. made for you, you know, just things that everybody has access to. Oh, right. Right. Um, oh, I know a lot of things are kind of a meme to composers. Like someone in the chat's bringing up, he uh, damage. Right, like how yeah. those those pop up everywhere. Yeah, um, but also I think this kind of ties into the phrase based libraries. I think you talked about at one point. Yeah, mm -hmm. and phrase based is kind of a different beast because it's you know here's some phrases that are hard to get to sound right, but a lot of composers use, and they're really basic, just kind of ostinatos or whatever. Yeah, and I think those are mostly harmless. If it, like some people can write an entire song with it, but it's not really going to sound like it's going anywhere. I think, but. Right. Uh, you know, when it comes to loops, I can kind of see it um, depending on, it, it kind of depends on what loop library ends up selling really well. I know there's a lot of, what's that genre, future base, where they, like a lot of, there's like a me, there's like another kind of meme pack that people buy. It has all the same sound effects like that woo right. noise they use in all of it. <laughs> Um, I like, yeah, the, I like I think, the yeah I like the demonstration there the woo yeah. <laughs> like yeah, uh, so many things but like I think more more my question there was do you think that the loops will like so the loop approach implies 
uh, you know, the people who only use presets, who only use the loops, who only use the pre-baked stuff in order to create the music. You know, they literally just pull things together and then they call it a unique creation, which I think is fine, but I don't think it's particularly creative. But do you think that perhaps one day the tools, like the loops themselves, will be so good that it is actually a problem for those, uh, let's call them proper composers, you know, the creative ones, the ones who come up with the, uh, the new ideas, the ones who come up with these things. Do you think this will ever be a problem for them? Or do you think that people who rely on uh, the, the, you know, the shortcuts and the, the presets will always be damned to the depths of generic hell? Mm, well, <laughs> I'd say that things getting easier benefits everyone a little bit. Right. I think so. How so? If it's like, oh yeah, if it's like, uh, I don't know, those isotope plugins where it does like it, it does an auto mix or an auto master yeah. or, or Gulf auto Foss that we were using the other yeah day. or Gulf Foss like that. I think those are nice. Those those kind of benefit everyone a little bit, especially right. if you're doing like roughs and stuff. I agree. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think maybe we'll have a period where it's kind of annoyingly oversaturated, but I think it'll serve as a gateway for a lot of people to start right. getting so, experimental, doing so you crazy think stuff. That you think that whilst it may be saturated and new composers are going to have to go through, you know, slog through the shit of genericness for a while, making it easier for them to get into it could lead to more people being creative in the long term because we have more people who have tried more things. We're more likely to get more directions if we encourage the saturation more than try to push people away from it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's kind of what I think. And then... Uh, I remember the Hans Zimmer masterclass. He talked about judging a competition for orchestral composition or something. And right. he said it was hard to judge them because he could tell all of them were using the same sample library. Right. Yeah. And he, he was saying like, and every note had the same emotion behind it or something. Every <laughs> note was written with the same context based or played with the same context. So it right. was hard to differentiate. Yeah, But I think, yeah, that's probably like a beginner mistake kind of thing. I think you can take any library you buy or any loop you have and mangle it in a really interesting way or use any shortcut tool to some really effective means to an end, I think. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. And and the Stig, thank you so much for calling in today. That is a great, great point to end on there. Is there anything you would oh, like absolutely. to say to the chat room before we move on, sir? Uh... No, nothing. Oh, I That's did want to say. That's four in a row. That's four in a row. I, the chat room. Oh, I did. No I did actually. Today. I did actually want to say. Uh, I've been following you since you posted on the Game Creators forums. Oh wow! So for those of you <laughs> who don't know, I I got into the industry right. So just stick stick around for a second. I'm just going to mm -hmm. explain this. So I actually the reason I'm a composer is uh, when I was a kid, I saw the trailer to Metal Gear Solid Two, and I was like, I don't care what I do in life, I need to work on Metal Gear. So I tried to make video games, and there was this uh, sample library called not sample library. What am I talking about? There was this uh, program called Dark Basic, right? Which is uh, a programming language where I used to try and program games. And the message board, like we have VI control in the music industry, but those those game creators, it, there's a forum called The Game Creators. And that's where I said, God, that must have been like, what, 15 years ago or something? I was a, I was a, I was a wee baby, dude. A wee baby. I is a wee baby. <laughs> Yeah, so I used to that that is some history right there. Fact, <laughs> like I miss those days. I may have to pay a visit to there. Like I, I think the oh, last yeah. time I posted there was before I had any success in the games industry. Maybe I could oh, yeah. offer some words of wisdom there now. <laughs> oh yeah, and then like, after that it was Film Riot and I saw you reappear and like I recognize that name. What the you, heck? You, yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah, small world, Riot. man. Well, yeah, Steve, thank you so much for calling in and thank you for that trip down memory lane. Uh, I greatly appreciate yeah, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Feel free one. to Feel free to call in anytime you want. Everybody in the chat room, please, a big thank you to the Stig. So as we were talking to the Stig there, I noticed in the chat room, we actually got the author of today's topic and tweet, Outsider, typed in. I wish, Outsider, if you have a microphone, I would love for you to call into the show. Just use the Discord uh, link in the chat room. Please do call in. I would love to discuss this further because clearly you have opinions on the subject. But Outsider wrote in the chat room, I'm the one who asked the question on Twitter. I don't know why I'm reading it like they're a bad guy. <laughs> I'll take that back. But if you look at the top sales on POM5, you can hear tracks where the composer basically laid their elbow on the keyboard on a stack of heaviosity damage drum loops came out. 
Then they throw in a few action strings on top of that, and yeah, half the song was completed. Someone who isn't a composer will never know how that was produced and will happily license it. When this happens enough times, it lowers the standards of the industry. Now, I completely, outsider, I completely understand what you're saying there. However, does the fault of that not lie somewhat on the composer themselves rather than the industry? So as we've been discussing today, um, We've had a few different opinions. One, one was that if we give more access to loops, then it is less likely that we will all converge on the same loops. And therefore, you know, we will have uh, more variation because whilst, you know, sample library one has 100 loops, sample library two has 100 loops. If everybody only has access to the first sample library, then we're all going to be using 100 loops. Whereas if we have access to both, we have 200 to pull from, meaning it's less likely we're all going to elbow on the same fucking keys. Is that not something perhaps that we could do? Is it not perhaps a positive, a net positive for the industry that saturation happens because it is then forcing the creative among us to push the bar forward? I, again, I wasn't insinuating that I am the creative amongst us, but you know, is it not true that saturation forces those who can to do is that not perhaps something that happens also um but yeah and also if if something does sound generic you will often find i think that um you know library houses or whatever you want to call them uh tend not to license them as much because they sound generic that's uh, one of the problems one of the big struggles of the epic music scene currently is um there's only so many ways one can imitate thomas bergerson before we have to move on so yes i agree but at the same time it also encourages us to move on so let's try another caller uh bailey sounds can you hear me i see you are in the you're in the queue with your mic muted can you hear me and silence. I'll just give them a second to try and figure that out. Bailey Sounds, you're on the chat room. You're live. If you can figure out your microphone. No, they've they've bailed out. They've bailed oh, out. Oh, hey. Oh, God. Hey. Piano Harvard, you've made it back, sir. How are you today? I'm fucking fabulous. But you are fucking <laughs> fabulous. Well, fantastic. So, Piano, that's what I'm going to call you today. That's your new name. All right. Piano. Call me Hal. Hal. Okay, I'll call you Hal. Hal. <laughs> <laughs> is library music, trailer music, epic music, is it saturated? And to you, is that a problem? Uh, absolutely, yes, and fuck no. <laughs> absolutely, yes. It's not and a problem. No. Okay, because... so it is saturated, but it's not a problem. Why is it not a problem? Yeah. I mean, it, this has been something that has been stated to the fucking ground ever since this dream started. It is basically... you can... There's only so much you can do with a brand. There's only so much you can do with a drone. Only so much you can do with like a string ostinato. Right. And then when you get like a pool of those that's filled all the way up, it pushes the create creative side of you to do something else. And that will in maybe like say 10, 15 years become the new epic music in quotes. Right. So you think that you think that saturation is a positive. I think what you're saying is agreeing with a few other of the callers is that because it's saturated, it's forcing us to thinking new ways and create new things in order to avoid the saturation. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. do you think in instead, oh, go on. instead of overfilling the pool, start filling up a new one? Right. So so perhaps what you're saying is that this jar is full and then what will happen is it'll yeah. start to overflow into something new. Yeah. But you can't overflow into something new unless you saturate. So perhaps the aim of any new thing is to saturate it to its point that it leads to something new. I like that. I'm not sure if that's yeah. what you're saying, but that's where the, the yeah, logic that's in my exactly head Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. So saturation is a good thing. And it's a good thing that, you know, stuff is saturated because it forces the create creative side of you that you wouldn't otherwise, you know, right. trigger. So what, what you're like, Perhaps what you're saying here, I'm not putting word in, words in your mouth. So is if we set, let's say someone comes up with a brand new idea, it's actually a good thing for everybody to go and experiment with that idea. Find as many different ways as you can twist that idea, because once we've all kind of got to that saturation point and it feels like we've pretty much done everything we can do with that, someone will find one of those strands and take it somewhere completely different. And that will be the next five years of our music. Do you think that's what's happening? Uh, hmm. 
Yeah, basically. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, 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 I tend to go all melodramatic and then and end it with a yes or no answer. But that, that yeah, is you talk kind of, a lot. <laughs> I, I know it's a bad habit, but that's kind of what you're saying, right? Is that if yeah. we oversaturate something, it then then we've got lots of different options in that area in order to go off in another direction. So let's say that Absolutely. We, someone does the trailer song thing, but you own like no one's allowed to copy it. It's going to be yeah. like the next thing that comes after that is going to be very specific to that one example of that new idea. Whereas if we had 10 different, if we had 10 different composers who did that one idea, but did it in different ways, something that they did might trigger something completely brand new that we wouldn't have got had we just had that first one. Yes, because when, when you have one composer with one idea, you have one branch of music, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. When you have 10 composers with the same idea, you get up to 10 different branches. Right, and each of those branches has 10 more branches. You made me say yes, branches then. absolutely. Branches. Yeah. <laughs> branches. <laughs> Exactly. And then those 10 ideas spawns 10 more ideas. And then some, one of these branches has like people trying to infuse 1960s Beatles style rock into their trailer music. And then someone's like, oh, that's a good idea. Well, what if I take yeah, that idea? Yeah, someone else has like 80s music and then, oh, yeah, oh, that's a okay, good one, you know? Right. So it is actually a net positive in order. So if you hear a great idea, what you're saying is don't be embarrassed to experiment with it because it will lead to more more musical greatness in the future. Absolutely. Creativity is the art of hiding your influences. If you're creative enough, you can hide that influence. No one will see that this is where you got it from. And to everybody else, it'll be something completely brand new. And then yeah. that is that, something brand new, ready to be absolutely ripped off to saturation point <laughs> and then lead to the next thing. I absolutely agree with you. So like to the next point in the, in the question about the loop about the loop uh, approach, do you think that that's a problem? So, as, as you heard, uh, as you heard outsiders say in the chat room, you know uh, what you tend to find is that some composers essentially have just put their arm on the keyboard with damage loops. In fact, I will just quickly do a demonstration of what that sounds like. But um, do you think that that's a problem? Do you think that the, uh, right, the laziness, okay, laziness is a problem? Huh? I gotta listen to it on the stream. You, you're gonna listen to it on the stream. Yeah. We, no, you're Did gonna you answer my. Example? Whatever. You're gonna answer my damn question for. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, uh, well, uh, that's the that's... loop approach. I, I don't really know en enough about it to like. Well, the make loop up my mind. The loop approach, uh, like basically. So if I just pull up, uh, where we got, where are the loops? Where are the loops? Okay. Loop are you doing loops. something now? Are yes, yes, something? bear with me. So, so the loop approach, for example, is this. Just doing that and then saying, this is my song. And because we all have access to that, that becomes the loop. What they were saying is someone just does this. I mean, if you put that in your song, you say, this is my song. This is I'm a loop composer. here. <laughs> <laughs> but th but that, that's what they're saying, like... Johnny Any <laughs> Anybody can do that and be a composer, technically. Whoa! Aram, thank you for the uh, the, the donation. The quality over quantity most uh, oh. most of the time wins. Stay awesome. Thank you so much. But that, that anyway, back oh, to my the point. Oh, the music. Oh, the alert. It's so fucking... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But that's what I'm saying. Because I'm able to do this... Well, yeah. And have something yeah. that is usable. Is that not taking away the creativity of music and forcing saturation in a negative way? So we're being saturated, but not because we've tried all the ideas, but because we're all out of laziness trying the same ideas. <laughs> if you let yourself be lazy. If you let yourself, so you think, so like that has actually been something we've talked about already is that uh, the lazy, do you think that the lazy people, the ones who are doing this, are all going to sound the same and then they'll end up pushed down into that kind of generic hell whereas the people who find this and then they figure out new interesting ways to take it they're the people that are going to rise to the top yeah yeah <laughs> i mean well, like smashing your elbow on your keyboard and say i'm done wait, okay wait 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 i'm gonna <laughs> here, here we go i'm gonna do PUBG 2 here we go all right all right, all right. Anyway. That's a bit of a delay. <laughs> anyway. anyway, 
this is how we compose these days. That is how it is done. Um, it doesn't uh, take a lot to be a composer no. these days. But yes. No, it really doesn't. So Hal, thank you so I mean, much. It depends if you, you, if you use the loops or you intentionally don't use them. You know what I mean? Or use them in new ways, perhaps. Yes, you can use them and you can build upon them. You know? <laughs> Anyway, Hal, thank you so much for calling in today. Is there anything you'd like to say to the chat room before you leave? Uh, yeah, I would like to ask you, what's your opinion on the matter? What's my? I well, I've, I've, I think that <laughs> library music is completely saturated, but I am, I am of a thought that saturation leads to more innovation, and innovation leads to new technologies. New technologies leads to new avenues of music that we didn't even know existed yet. So for me, yes, saturation is a fantastic thing. Uh, because it leads to something brand new. Anyway, everybody in the... Thank you. Thank you for the clap. Everybody in the chat room, please give a big thank you to Hal, Piano Halvard. Uh, let me see if we can pull in... So, well, before we do, before we pull anyone else in. So we've had a few things and we've all seen, you know, how easy it is to... I'm a composer. Like we, we've all seen how easy it can be to compose and how easy it would be to uh, abuse, abuse said tools. What did you just stumble into? Well, Casey, that is an interesting question. But we have reached the end of our discussion. We have one hour discussion. So thank you, everybody who called in for this question. Um, I am going to give some like we're winding up the the trailer question if any of you have any questions for me or something a statement about the industry you would like to make do join the discord and we will discuss those live on air but um before we move on to our next caller i'm just going to finish this segment if you're on twitch hang around we're not finished yet if you're on youtube this is where this video is going to cut so trailer music i think the the consensus was it is in fact, saturated, but that is not a bad thing. It can lead to innovation and it can lead to uh, new avenues, which we don't even know exist yet. So we saturate something, we explore an idea to its completion. We call that the saturation. And then that overflows like a jug into a new jug of creativity. I've, I've strung all that together from our callers today. We've had an absolutely great discussion. And next week, uh, I think we're probably going to be discussing piracy next week. So if you've got all your thoughts on that, you know, keep that raring to go. But if you're on YouTube, thank you so much for watching this episode of Today with Daniel James, uh, our weekly radio talk show, which happens on Saturdays at 12 noon PST, which is Los Angeles time. I, I do it that time because then I can reach kind of as many people as possible. Uh, you know, so it's not too late for everybody to call in. But thank you for joining in today. Um, if you, again, if you're on Twitch, hang around. We're going to carry on. But uh, everybody on YouTube, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.